And after this, we'll move on to muscular system. So today we'll be going over skeletal fractures and diseases. Okay, so some common fracture terms that you'll probably need to know. There's non-displacement. This, this means that the bone is in a normal position and displacement is that the bone is out of that normal position. <clears throat> this is also known as um, displace. Um, it's like, um, I think on the first day, someone asked whether you could break a joint and I guess you could displace your joint so that it's dislocated, so it's out of the normal position. And then a complete bone break is where the bone is broken all the way through, while incomplete means it's not. Then you have simple and compound. Simple is where the bone, when it's broken, it doesn't penetrate the skin. And the compound is that the bone does penetrate the skin. You have a guided note sheet. Yeah, uh, it, I posted it in classroom yesterday, and I believe someone posted that they didn't get it. I commented on that too. So penetrate the skin. It means that when your broke bone is broken, so you might have like some piece of the bone sticking out, and then if it pierces through your skin and you can like see it from outside, that means that it's like it's gone through the skin and it's a compound fracture. Can you repeat the complete part? <clears throat> yeah. So complete means that the bone isn't broken all the way through. So if you break a bone, it's probably like partially broken. But it says bone is bro bone broken all the way through. Oh yeah, sorry. I meant uh, other way around. So bone is not broken all the way through? And uh, the complete bone fracture, the bone is broken all the way through. Okay. Wait, what does penetrate mean? It means like the bone is sticking through the skin. You can see it from outside. That's weird. Yeah, it is. It's more painful. Have you guys ever broken a bone before? Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm going to move on and you'll see examples of all these terms in the next exam um, examples of fractures. So these are a different yeah, fracture type. Yeah, yeah sure. Go back and stay on the side for like, like 10. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. So these are your fracture types. <clears throat> this is Wait, an example. Can you go back? Um, yeah. Okay. Can you go I'll back to the slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on. I'll post the presentation on 
classroom after class, so you can copy off of that. So these are fracture types. This is a normal bone. <clears throat> the first one is transverse. That's where the break is perpendicular to the long axis of the bone. So you can see it's just like this way. And the bone is completely broken through. As you can see, the line goes completely through the bone. Next is oblique. The break is diagonal on the bone. And this is also a complete fracture. <clears throat> and it's usually when one end of the bone is shifting down while the other end is shifting up. And this will cause the diagonal fracture. Wait. Yeah? You said you posted a cheat sheet. Where is it? I don't really get what the cheat sheet is. The cheat sheet? Yeah, um, someone I was saying the... something about that. Oh, I posted a note sheet. Someone said I didn't post a note sheet because usually I post a note sheet every day. Um, it should be on Classroom, though. Okay. It's just a day three note sheet. <clears throat> so then you have a spiral fracture, and this is usually caused by torque force. Um, torque force. So that means your bone is twisting, and this causes the bone fracture to become a spiral. Wait, if you get hurt while going on, like... A fireman pull. Would that cause a spiral? Um, when you go down a fire pull? Like the fireman pull? Like those long stick things? Oh, because like, that? You're twirling around? I don't know if that would cause like a fracture on your bone. It's usually caused like a, a strong impact. So someone like suddenly twists oh. your bone oh, and yeah. it'll create a spiral fracture on your bone. Yeah. So, like, one <laughs> of the bones, like, turned around? Yeah, so, if, um, like, if you take your arm and you twist it, don't do that, by the way, but if you twisted it really hard, then it might fracture, and that would be, create a spiral fracture. Oh. And then, calm inuated, it means that your bone is, like, crushed, and it breaks into many different pieces, and this is, usually, it's pretty problematic, because when you wear a cast, when you break a bone, you wear a cast to hold your bone pieces in place. But when you have a comminuted um, bone fracture, then some of the pieces like might fall outwards and you can't really hold it in place that well. I guess you would say comminuted is the worst, but <clears throat> yeah, I guess it would be the worst. Though you can fact check that. So next is avulsion, and this is where the bone crease that breaks off is pulled apart from the rest of the bone. And then you have impacted, where the two bone pieces, it's opposite of avulsion. These um, two bone pieces are pushed together. And this could sometimes create like other mini fractures. Wait, how could they be pushed together? So say uh, I broke my bone in half, but, and then like I push down my arms so that the two bone pieces are pushed together. Because it's not always that there's a force pulling your arm apart. And there's a similar fracture to this, which about next, and that's called compression, where force pushing down on your bone causes it to, um, <clears throat> causes it to push together so hard that it fractures. But compression is found in your spine, while impacted, I guess, is in any bone. <clears throat> the common unit um, bone break is where the bone is broken into multiple pieces. And this is pretty bad because then it's hard to hold your bone pieces together. Wait, I have a question. Yeah? Can you give like an example for like, evolution of the bone that happens there? For which one? Evolution? Yeah. Oh, so I guess say if I broke my arm in half and then uh, some force is pulling my arm out and the bone pieces, because they're broken, they start to separate and that would be avulsion. Then this one is fissure. There's, um, it's basically a crack down the bone. And this is an incomplete bone break because the bone isn't actually completely broken through. These, I think they're, they're usually like not as serious. Sometimes people call it a hairline fracture. 
and some people don't even have to wear a cast for this because the bones aren't broken into pieces so you don't have to hold it together. And the last one is a green stick fracture. This is more common among young children because young kids have softer bones and so this would cause the bone to bend and not break completely. Wait, could you repeat Fisher? Yeah, this is where there's just a crack in the bone. It's not a complete break, it's incomplete. And some people don't even have to wear a cast for a fissure fracture because they don't have to hold their bone together. Oh, okay. So green stick fracture is where your bone is not broken completely and it's common in kids because you have um, a, you have softer bones, they're not completely mineralized and this makes it easier for the bone to bend instead of break completely. So comminuted is where the bone is broken into multiple pieces. Yeah, that's right. That um, green stick is like a young plant. So transverse and oblique, these are just um, transverse is a break horizontally across the bone and oblique is a break diagonally. And these are complete um, bone fractures. Wait, so in like a comminuated um, fracture, is there like a chance that your bone would like never heal because you could like lose some pieces? I think your bone would still heal. It just like, it would have, it would take a lot longer to heal than other fractures. Okay. Because as we learned in the last class, your bone has the capability of building new bone. Spiral is caused by torque, so that's twisting of your bone. If someone twists your bone, then it would create a spiral fracture. So is everyone done copying this down? Wait, so people who um, have like a um, fissure or the green stick don't need casts or anything? Uh, I think if you have a green stick fracture, you'd still need a cast because even though it's not completely broken, it's you like the bone is bending, so you'd have to have a cast to hold it in place. In fissure, sometimes people would wear a cast, but other times you don't if the um, if the fracture is extremely thin because your bone isn't broken into pieces. Um, just a reminder that we have like the attendance form. There's only 33 responses, so yeah. Yeah, I believe all bone fractures should hurt. Since you have blood vessels and nerves going into your bone, Okay, so I'm gonna move on, and if you haven't finished copying, I will post the presentation after. So these are three other types of fractures. You have depressed um, compression and epiphyseal. So depressed is basically a piece of your skull is being pushed into your skull. I guess you could say it's similar to impacted and compression, except this is for the skull. And then compression is in the spine, where if your spine is compressed, so hard then you'll create like compression fractures like you see over here this would also 
do damage to your nerves since your spine has nerves going through it. Then you have a pivot seal, which is common in kids because you guys have a uh, growth at your pivot seal line. So it's actually not a line, it's a pivot seal plate. So you have growth there and a fracture. So the bone there is softer and it's easier to break. So you sometimes have a break at the a pivot seal line. Wait, can you go back just for a second? To the last slide? Yeah. Okay. Oh, never mind. Oh, then never mind. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, these three types of fractures, depressed, um, compression, and epiphyseal, um, are not on notes. Oh, yeah. You, I didn't put them on the notes, but you could still write them down if you want to know. Remember them. Can you say all of them again? Yeah, so depressed is, like, impacted, except it's for the skull where a piece of your skull is broken and it presses into your skull. Then compression is for the spine. And this is where your pressure pushes down on your spine. And usually so hard that it creates compression fractures. I can see over here. And it also damages the nerves that go through your spine. And epiphyseal is common in children because they have growth at their epiphyseal plate. And this growth, so the bone around this area is usually softer and it's easier to break. Uh, compression, you have a strong force pushing down on your spine, and this creates compression fractures, which you can see in the picture, and it also damages nerves that go through your spine. Okay, so softer bones, I, I'm not sure, if, um, I'm actually not sure about that whether it's easier to break or not. But I just know that it's common in kids because you guys have growth at the previous seal plate. I haven't gone to sprain yet. I think it's on the next slide. So pivot seal, because children have growth at their pivot seal plate, this part of the bone is more easier to break off. Yeah, we didn't get to spring yet. So does everyone have this down? Yes. Okay. Great, so bone injuries. Someone was talking about sprain, and these are injuries in your ligaments. So ligaments are these tough, um, it's this tough tissue that holds your bones together. And a sprain is where the ligaments are stretched or torn. So I believe most of you have probably heard of spraining your ankle. That's when your leg twists suddenly and this causes the ligaments that hold your, um, your ankle together to break or stretch out. And sometimes ligaments, um, sprains, they require a surgery to heal them. So like if I broke a ligament in my knee, then I might require a surgery. Four times, that's very sad to hear. So a cartilage injury is damage to your cartilage, which is the covering around your joints. And this is where cartilage, it could like tear or it wears off. And yeah, I guess the injury might create a popping sound. This location that is a displaced bone, which we learned about on the first slide, 
So this is where, um, like in this picture, the bone is shifted out of its normal position. Um, and it looks kind of scary. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. the notes for the first slide. Can you really quickly go back? First slide, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so this location is kind of the same thing as this placement. Wait, so for displacement, when your bone like moves, your skin is gonna like pop out or something like that, right? Uh, you mean your skin like shifts? Yeah. Oh, I guess kind of, unless your displacement penetrates the skin. So ligaments are these tough, um, it's the tough tissue that holds your bones together. And a sprain is where the ligament is stretched or torn. How do they fix the dislocation? They hammer your bone back in place. Actually, I'm not sure about that. You can search it up. Okay, ligaments, they're strong tissue that holds your bone together. So does everyone have this down? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go into bone diseases. This is arthritis. So this is um, damage to your bone joints. <clears throat> you have three types of arthritis. There's osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gouty arthritis. So osteoarthritis is known as the wear and tear. These happen in old people because they use their joints a lot. And over time, this causes the cartilage in the joints to wear down. So you can see here, this is a healthy joint, and the blue part is the cartilage. And in, in osteoarthritis, there isn't much cartilage left. And that means that the bone joints, when you move them, they kind of rub against each other, and this would create pain and inflammation at your joint. So then rheumatoid arthritis, this is an autoimmune disease. So your, your immune system kind of I think they attack at the cartilage on your bones and this causes the cartilage to not be there. And sometimes your bones will actually fuse together so you can't even move that joint. And this is, this could happen in people of any age and they're usually born with this. So this is an image of a rheumatoid arthritis. Then gouty arthritis is caused by uric acid crystals in the joints. So this causes also pain and inflammation at joints. So that's just what arthritis is, pain and inflammation at joints. Wait, could you repeat the last one? Uh, gouty arthritis, yeah, that's uric acid crystals. They deposit into your joints. Wait, what's uric acid? That's like metabolic waste that your body produces. Okay, does everyone have this copy down? Um, no. One second. Yeah, okay.
I believe that if you have rheumatoid arthritis, it might be in all your joints because it's like an autoimmune disease and it affects your immune system. So if like your bones fuse together, you can't like move anything? I don't believe that all of your bones will fuse together, but it is possible for your bones to fuse. Okay. Yeah, it is sad. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. To Wait, the next I'm on time. the last one. Can you just wait one second? Yeah, okay. 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 So here are some skeletal disorders that are pretty common or will, not the will common. Will you send us, will you post this presentation in Google Classrooms? Yes, I will. Okay. Okay, so this picture is of a herniated disc. This is rupture of the tissue between your vertebrae. So over here, there's a rupture. And then this causes um, like this tissue to push outwards against your spine. And sometimes it damages the nerves, a herniated disc. So this disrupts nerves in the spine. This can lead to problems. Wait, could you repeat that? My headphones stopped working. <laughs> yeah, so a herniated disc is rupture of tissue between the vertebrae. So over here, there's a rupture. And this pushes against the nerves in your spine. So this um, causes disruption. Oh. Yeah, so the spine is important in sending neural signals because it houses like, uh, yeah, it houses a spinal cord where nerves go through and it sends signals to the rest of your body. And so damage to that is pretty bad. This is just a picture of one vertebrae. So it's not the entire spine. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. So here are more disorders. This is dwarfism. You have achondroplasia caused dwarfism and pituitary dwarfism. So achondroplasia, this is defect in the formation of cartilage on long bones. So this causes your, like, um, your long bones, which are basically your limbs, like your arms and your legs to become very short. So in this picture, you have a normal sized baby, except their arms and legs are extremely short. And then pituitary dwarfism is caused by a lack of growth hormone. So this causes the entire person to just be small in general, and they don't grow very tall. So yeah, this is dwarfism. And then this picture on the right here is scoliosis, and that is lateral curvature of the spine. So if you sit in a very awkward position where you're always bent toward one side, you'll gradually develop scoliosis. And also, if you wear like your backpack on one arm, and you always lean towards one side because of that, that'll also cause scoliosis. So you should wear your backpack on both arms. It's not cool.
Okay. Okay, so does everyone have this copy down? Oh, I need like 30 yeah. more seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay. I need, I need 10 more seconds. Yeah. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is a way of measuring whether you have scoliosis or not. So this is known as the Cobb angle. And basically, if you draw two perpendicular lines through your bone, uh, through your, your spine, sorry, and they, they cross over here to create an angle, this small angle, and that is known as your Cobb angle. So the more bent your spine is, the larger the Cobb angle is. And basically, you have to have greater than or equal to 10 degrees for a Cobb angle in order to be considered scoliosis. Wait, is scoliosis bad? Yeah, it's bad. You should have a fairly straight spine when you look at it later, um, from the back. Oh yeah, in our school this year we had to get to get like a scoliosis test. Yeah, usually at the beginning of the school year during gym, they have that thing where they like they basically feel your spine to make sure that it's straight. I think that if you go to Genesis, you have to fill out a form that to say whether you already have scoliosis check or not. If you did, then you don't have to take that test. Um, if you don't treat scoliosis, what will happen? If you what? Don't treat scoliosis and let it go. Um, then you would have a very bad, um, body posture. And I'm not sure, but it might affect your nerves because nerves go through your scalp, your spine. Yeah, if you go to the doctors to get your um, yearly checkup, sometimes the doctor will also have you bend over where they feel your back to make sure that your spine isn't bent. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. So more disorders. You have osteogenesis imperfecta, and this is abnormal bone formation. It's also known as brittle bone disease because your bones aren't formed properly. They break very easily. This is kind of similar to osteoporosis, except it's not caused by, it's like a different cause. So this is just abnormal bone formation. And then you have rickets. This is a lack, caused by a lack of vitamin D, calcium, or phosphate. And it's more common in young kids because they are, um, these are the people who are most targeted by not enough nutrients. So this leads to soft bones and stunted growth. So as you can see in this picture, kind of scary, if you don't have enough vitamin D, then your bones start to bend. This can cause like um, legs to look like this. Yeah, you shouldn't eat french fries every day. I don't think that's very healthy.
Can we go on to the next slide? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move on and the presentation will be on classroom, so don't worry. Okay, right, so here is a weak bone scale. This is basically, so you have a normal bone, which is basically your bone is normal, it's healthy. Then you have osteopenia, which is the osteopenia, which is the next level of having low bone des bone des sorry, bone density. And this is basically your bones are kind of porous. They can break easily, but it's not as bad as osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is first level. And it's like you can have very common bone fractures. And it's mostly in old people because as we mentioned in the last class, old people have higher levels of parathyroid hormone. And this causes excessive bone turnover where your osteoclasts keep breaking down the bone and not enough osteoblasts build the bone. So this will lead to porous bones and easy fractures. So bone density, if you have um, negative one or lower, then you have osteopenia. And if you have negative 2.5 and lower, then you have osteoporosis. So this is different from osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta is caused by abnormal bone formation, while this is caused by excessive bone breakdown. Are we gonna play like quizzes live or something like that 99 today? Ninety-nine yeah. plus messages in the chat. So it's not too many osteoclasts. It's too much osteoclast activity. So parathyroid hormone. That is what boosts osteoclast activity, and elderly people have excessive amounts of that. Can you go back to um, the sciliosis part? I didn't get the cob angle. Yeah. Okay. You have osteoporosis? That's troublesome. Wait, so are we gonna play like Quizlet or Scribble Eye all day? Yeah, we're gonna play Quizlet. Okay. And it's gonna be a review of all of these entire three days. So I hope you remember what you learned on day one and day two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Kahoo, apparently you have to pay money in order to have more than 12 people. And I'm not rich, so I didn't buy Kahoot. Only nine plus to this. Kahoot is free if you're using it for less than 12 participants. Oh, well, I have no idea why, but Quizlet works, and I think they're not that different, in my opinion. Oh, okay, so does everyone have, like, the entire presentation down? Any questions? Can you stay on here for, like, two more minutes? Yeah. Oh, calm down. I haven't started the game yet. So there's no code.
Oh, they did? I guess I'll ask Vivek how he does it. You're gonna ask who? 